Hello everyone, this is Dina, and today I'm going to be sharing with you some kitted projects that I have, and I'm going to ask that you vote for one in each category that you're interested in voting on to tell me what you would like to see me start first in that category as I begin finishing projects throughout the year and am eligible for a new start in my rotation. So to make it easy for me, I'm just going to have you vote uh, on the top one of your choice in each of the categories and I will give you um, the information below uh, in the description box as well and uh, that way you can uh, you don't have to take so many notes you can just watch uh, but if you will take a moment and look at my kitted projects I'll give you the category I'll show you the projects and the fabric that I've chosen to do on the project on and then at the end, uh, you can put in the comments below which projects that you want to see done first in each category. So our first category that we're going to start with right now is Mirabilia. That's one of my favorite designers. And I have three of her patterns kitted. So I'm going to pause a moment and flip this camera around so you can see it easily. And I won't be having trying to hold it up, you know, and show it to you. So uh, hold on a second, and I'll be right back with the first of the categories. Here is number one in the Mirabilia category. There are three. The first one is Autumn Queen, and I'm planning on doing it on this beautiful golden linen. I don't know the name of it. I bought it years ago to do my Christmas Queen on it, only discover I had bought too small a piece. So this has been in my stash for years, but it is a linen, and it, I just call it a golden linen because I don't know the true name of it. But this is the Autumn Queen. I'll zoom in a little bit for you. That's option one. Okay, option two. Option two, Mirabilia is Ashley's Roses. And this one I had planned on doing this year uh, with my patriotic um, ornaments and things of that nature because of the red, white, and blue in it. But I didn't get to it because my Sleeping Beauty is taking a little bit longer than I had anticipated, but it's gonna be well worth the wait, I think. Anyway, here's Ashley's Roses, and I'm gonna do that on this beautiful hand dyed fabric. It has a little bit of the yellows and pinks in it and you'll notice that in the background of Ashley's Rose it's sort of just a antique white, off white, but notice how much white is in the dress. I really wanted that to pop and I like all the pink colors. You see those in the ribbons and the flowers. And, I, and her golden hair. So I thought those colors all would represent well on this fabric. So that's why I chose that one. So that's Ashley's Roses. And the final one is the Crystal Christmas. I nicknamed it Fa La La, but its true name is Crystal Christmas. And it has all these cute little angels dancing around this Christmas tree. And I have chosen this Silk Weaver fabric. It's a 32 count Lugana, and it's called Pixie Dust. And this is the one that I waited on for so long. <laughs> but you can see it is perfect for this pattern. All those purples and pinks and greens, they're all in this fabric. So I think that's gonna be really pretty together. So once again, I'll back up so you can see them all. We've got Autumn Queen, Ashley's Roses, or Crystal Christmas. So if you would, vote on one of those for the Mirabilia category. Okay, now we'll go to Teresa Wentzler. I also am a big Teresa Wentzler fan. And this year, I started my first Teresa Wentzler pattern with the Nativity for my Christmas year round sale. So I have four TW patterns 
kitted ready to go and this is the first of them. This is the mermaid. I'm doing the mermaid on a beige jewelry. That's what it looks like right there. Just a beige so that it doesn't take away from anything in the picture. That's the first Teresa Winslet. The second one is Juliet. And Juliet, you can see quite a bit of greenery all around and little flowers. You can see the greenery of the flowers in the border. So I am doing her on a beautiful pewter that has kind of a green gray tint. And that's Romeo and Juliet. The next Teresa Wentzler pattern is Rapunzel. And for Rapunzel, I have just selected a potato Lugana. This is just a almost diff, mix between a white and a brown. It's just a really light color. Um, not quite a, a tan, but a little bit darker than an off-white. And I think it'll make a pretty background here, back in here, because otherwise it's full coverage. The final one of the Teresa Wentzler choices is the Fantasy Triptych. Someone on Floss Tube, it may be a Mrs. Crafty, Crafty, is doing this one already, but I've seen it uh, recently, and I thought, I have that. <laughs> this one I'm planning on doing on a beautiful fabric by the name of Heather. Isn't that lovely? But there's a lot of purple in this pattern, in the outfits, and I thought having that light purple background would be really, really pretty. So that's what I have selected for the fantasy triptych. Okay, so please vote for one of these four. The Mermaid by Teresa Winsler, Romeo and Juliet, Rapunzel, or the Fantasy Triptych. And that will give me my next start in that category. Okay, the third category is what I'll call patriotic. This has been a year of Fourth of July ornaments and, and uh, the Four Freedoms. And so this is a patriotic sampler. It is a Jeanette Douglas design, and I just purchased it this year in California. And I didn't realize when I purchased it that it required um, specialty thread and has a lot of specialty stitches in it. But I went ahead and got all of that. And here is the fabric I've decided to to stitch it on. It's a, just a mushroom Lugana, but I think it will um, allow the white in the red, white, and blue stitching to really show up a lot better. Second choice in the patriotic category is Emma Rose Freedom. This is one of those um, beautiful charts that I received as a rack from my friend Terry. And, um, I'm excited to have it kitted and ready to go. So it's uh, a tree of life samplings pattern. And I've decided to do that on this Confederate gray. I think it would look really pretty on that. Emma Rose Freedom. So you have two choices in the patriotic category. Patriotic Sampler or Emma Rose Freedom. All right, here's another one of my favorite designers, Lavender Lace, Lavender and Lace, and this is Oak Christmas Tree, and I'm trying to cover up the pattern there so that you don't see it, but I'll try to show you how beautiful that piece is gonna be with the little boy and girl decorating the tree. And I'm going to do that on just a raw natural Belfast linen, 32 count. 
The second one that I'm looking at for lavender and lace is Nantucket Rose. And um, this one was a rack. Uh, I won this from um, Covered in Cat Hair, Talia. And uh, in fact, I, I got this one and another one from her from that gift. And I've got it uh, now in my Kit It Up section. And I'm just going to be doing it on a gray um, even weave. It's a hand dyed gray even weave. It's 32 count. And this is a um, winter rose. And I had already cracked this one open. I had intended to do that this year. And I struggled and struggled with what fabric to put on this one. I'm trying to cover up that pattern again. Uh, I had, I looked at the white the way they have it and decided that I wanted something different than white because I wanted the girl's white muffler and headband to really pop. And I got to looking at those beautiful flowers and the red tones, you know, in this project and decided that I thought this rose uh, colored linen would be perfect. It's called Apple Blossom and it's a 32 count linen and that's what I'm intending to do winter rose on. And the last of my lavender and lace candidates um, is the um, Guardian Angel. This is the second pattern that I got from Talia when I won her contest. And it's one I had been wanting to do for a while and I was so delighted to get it. And I have chosen a fabric called Ancient. It's a Lugana, 32 count. And I like it because it has these splotches of colors that are in this piece. So you notice there's a bit of gold in her dress, but then there's also these beautiful green tones. And I just think that they're gonna look beautifully on this uh, ancient fabric here. So I've chosen that for that piece. So we'll recap, just so you remember. Oh Christmas Tree, Nantucket Rose, Winter Rose or Guardian Angel? What will be the next Lavender and Lace? Okay, that's the lineup. If you will take a minute or two just to write me a comment, I would greatly appreciate it. And that way I'll have a vote of what you would like to see developing over the months as I stitch it. It'll help me make some decisions because they're all so beautiful and I want to do them all at some point in time. So how do you pick? <laughs> you guys can help me out a lot. I appreciate you taking the time and watching this little part of my video. And I can't wait to see what your votes um, come out to be in the end. Oh, and by the way, I've had my son take a vote. He's already told me which one he would pick to start first and which one he thinks that I would have picked. And so... Uh, He's way anxiously awaiting to see uh, what you guys say. I'll talk to you soon. Happy stitching. Bye. Okay, this is not for a vote. It's just for information. I wanted to ask if you guys had had any experience with this type of fabric, if you would give me a heads up. I have these Little House Needleworks um, patterns here that are the, um, it's called Hometown Holiday actually. And I'm trying to move them off so you can see the fabric here. But this is a beautiful grayish blue fabric. The color looks more gray on my phone. Um, it's really closer to like a 926. <laughs> that sky that I just did in Smoky Mountain Christmas would match this perfectly. But anyway, um, I recently saw someone who had stitched on this fabric and it could have been even the brown background, but it had these dots painted on it like this one does. And my intention here was to let that be snowflakes in the background. But when I saw the person who had stitched on it um, showing their project, they complained that the white dots showed through their stitching. I certainly don't want that to happen. 
So um, if any of you have used this type of fabric with the painted on dots and you had any coverage concerns, would you please let me know? And if you did use it and you had to use a, a larger number of threads than normal, would you let me know that too? I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, here is my Smoky Mountain Christmas, fully framed. I think it's beautiful. I think Marla did a fantastic job. This frame is perfect. You can see my shadow, sorry. <laughs> All right, notice that there is a bronzy color to the frame. Kind of a goldish metallic look, but it's wood. But that gold matches beautifully with these gold metallic threads for these um, jingle bells. And the brown tint in it matches beautifully with this sleigh. Just brings it out so nicely. Notice there's a fillet there, that's what she called it, I asked to be sure, um, that separates the fabric from the glass. It provides the space for the snowflakes. These beads are sitting right up on top of the fabric. They're not pushed into it. You can actually tell that they're hanging around. They look like falling snowflakes. There's the clouds in the background. And then there's that beautiful Santa Claus and puppy. Um, you can see now what I mean by all the different shades of green that are in here. There was no way that we could get a mat that would match because you've got all these bluish greens in the sky, in the shadows, and then you've got some dark bluish green trees and shadows. And then you've got Christmassy greens and forest green in this coat and toys and tree. So it's just too many shades of green. But the red suede is beautiful. I think it's really a nice piece. I'm gonna move back a little bit now so you can see it again. I'm a little proud of it. <laughs> I really like it. I think it has turned out beautifully. So I hope this inspires those of you that are working on it to keep going because the end result is just breathtaking. It's so pretty. Um, I'm like all of us, you know, I wish my stitches were better and I wish I hadn't made a mistake or two along the way, but you know what? I don't think you could find them. I know I, I probably won't be able to after a while, but, um, Anyway, I'm going to enjoy it, and I just wanted to share it with you. So thank you for watching uh, my most recent FFO, uh, Smoky Mountain Christmas. Good morning, everyone. Today is Friday, May 19th, and this is Dina, and I am here to give you a whip update on Firefly Fairies. Um, as I had mentioned earlier on uh, my last video, having only one day to work on my two whips that I used during Stitch Mania was very difficult for me because I really like to give about three days to each of them so I can see progress. And I had gone ahead and worked on Sleeping Beauty and I had put her on my last video. So the next whip I picked up, I went back and picked up Firefly Fairies. I wanted to get a little more work on that as well. So here's a reminder of the one I'm doing. And here's where I am. As it turns out, I have to roll this up on my scroll frame. So the next time I work on it. And so I wanted to go ahead and show it to you while I had it loose uh, so you could see the entire picture. I've been showing you sort of where I was working, but now you can see the whole thing. 
and you can tell originally where I was doing all the beading as I went and that was just confusing me and slowing me down because there are so many little colors in here and so many different beads. This is very bead heavy. So I decided a while back, a couple of rotations ago, that I would leave out the beads and I started around in here and there's some that are needed on her dress that I didn't finish and I just decided to stitch all the cross stitches and then I would start beading again. So that's what I've done and um, this last rotation I think you saw I had worked a little bit on the blue fairy I had gotten her shoulders and her sleeve done so now I've come back in and I've sort of finished down to about right here and then I moved across on the red fairy and I filled in all of this in here and actually did a little bit down here as well but I made sure I got this solid piece done. So now, the next time I work on it, I will be rolling it up uh, so that my new fabric will be below the two ladies. You know, I'll roll it up to about right here and then that way I can work on this section of these uh, two ladies. So that's where I'm at. I'm very pleased with the progress this rotation. I felt like I got quite a bit done this time and uh, it is going much quicker without the beading um, so I'll wait and do that at the end I've got my invisible thread it's very frustrating but it would be great because then it won't matter what kind of bead I have to grab and I can just bead all the way across and and down so I'll bite the bullet and do that I want to try that new uh, is it Nemo thread or something. I'll have to get with uh, one of you guys like Jesse Marie. I think you use that. And I think Kelly Bell does too from Kelly Bell Stitches. She actually has a collection of different colors. Um, but anyway, that's where I'm at on this piece and I'm ready to put it away until either June or July, depending on when my whip rotation comes back around. And I just uh, am glad I got to share it with you in, in uh, the fullness of it instead of just a piece of it this time. I hope you're having a great Stitch Mania if you're still going at it. Uh, I have uh, finished mine up now, especially with this piece. Uh, I've gotten more work on that uh, whip that I worked on on the very um, first you know day. So um, I hope that, uh, that you're doing as well. And if you're still making your fresh starts every day, oh, more power to you. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. Um, I think this has been a, a great stitch mania for me. It was everything I'd hoped for. So the rest of the month, I intend to work on whips and start some planning for the month of June. I want to get back into doing some of my sows. I didn't do very many uh, in May because of mania. But I want to get back into some of those because that's very fun and it makes you feel a part of the community. And um, I also am uh, excited that I just registered for another stitching retreat uh, yesterday. It's not until August, but it's very close. It's close by. It's in Marietta, Georgia. And um, it's under Stitchers Escapes if you're interested. It's a Facebook group, Stitchers Escapes, and they list them for all over the country. But this is uh, sponsored by Katrina Boyd, and she's the same lady that puts on the stitching retreats in Sevierville, Tennessee, that I enjoy so much. And uh, she has listened to us. There were several of us from Georgia that would attend, and we asked her, why don't you come to Georgia? And so she has, and that's going to be in August of this year. So if you're living anywhere close by and you want to uh, come to the retreat, this is going to be a unique one because her room is larger and she can hold more people. So it's not limited to 25. Uh, so give it a look. And um, if you need more information, put a comment below and I'll try to help you find it. Um, would love to see you there. Okay, that's going to do it for me today. I'm going to put this uh, away and start looking at what I want to work on next. And uh, 
I hope that you have a wonderful, productive, and relaxing day of stitching. Goodbye. Hi everyone, welcome back to uh, a whip update with Dina. I am coming to you on May 23rd and today I'm giving you an update on my um, bewitching and this is the cute little um, witch <laughs> with her raven and I um, just wanted to take a moment and show you the progress that I've made uh, this rotation and I'm going to pause the camera and turn it around where you can see it because it's still on my stand and I think that is the best way to view it so hold on a moment and I'll share it with you okay here's bewitching and you can see that I have started at the top and I'm working my way down last time I had just finished this sleeve had just finished it and I had taken this um, ribbon about as far as I could get uh, before I needed to uh, you know, roll it up again. So I've come back over here now. I'm working my way, pardon my finger there, working my way across here. So I've tackled the dress. There was a little bit done on the dress and so now I've tackled that dress and I'm going to move back so you can see. I've taken it as far down as I can and I've parked some threads there and I've come back up to the shoulder and I've started working out toward the shoulder and I'm starting to work on this blue here, blue and white here as well of that little jacket that uh, or coat that she has on. So next rotation, hopefully I'll get another sleeve done. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I'll either get the sleeve finished or I'll get this side finished with, you know, part of the sleeve. I'm working on both of those as I work my way over. Um, you see that sparkle in the moon? <laughs> sparkle in this coat. Anyway, it has been a pleasure to work on this and I am enjoying it thoroughly. But it is time to move on uh, to the next uh, piece in the rotation. So hopefully you can get a good view of Bewitching and how she's coming along. Thanks for sharing it with me. I'll talk to you again soon. Hello everyone. I hope you're having a great day of stitching, finishing, whatever you may be doing with your craft. Hopefully stitching. But I wanted to take a break from stitching for just a few minutes to show you what I got in the mail. Happy mail. It's from 123 Stitch. And I have split the top open just so I could get the package out. Oh, excited. I'll share with you my small haul. I don't buy too much at one time, but um, I've been saving up my stitch from stash money <laughs> in my budget and so I am delighted to be able to share it with you. The first thing I'll share with you is the Gentle Arts thread that I got. This is the Mediterranean Sea. I was gifted one of these. I think that will help. I was gifted one of these recently. Um, just from a very, very kind postcard pal. And it's such a beautiful variegation, if you can see that. I think you can, the different purples and blues. And I'm thinking of selecting my own colors uh, for the pattern that I recently um, received about uh, being a cross-stitcher. And it's an older uh, fashion looking pattern, like an old sampler. But I want to make it look a little more um, modern, even though it's an old fashioned piece. And I thought I would pick my own colors because they're very pale um, neutrals. And um, when I saw 
uh, Emily C. commented very kindly back on my video when I asked her about looking at some colors with me. She recommended that I consider the dress in blue. And when I saw this Mediterranean Sea with all those blue variegations that I had been gifted, I thought this is a perfect color to start building around for this pattern. But I don't know that one would do enough for the long dress. So I went ahead and ordered a second one because it is so beautiful. Even if I don't need both of them, I'll use it for something else. But if I get started, I don't want to run out. So I have that for that project. And the other thing I have done is I have treated myself to three pieces of fabric so that I can begin kitting up three more projects to have in the wings. These will not be in the voting. These aren't ready yet, but I just went ahead and ordered the fabric, you know, while I had a chance to. So let me show you the fabric and then show you the piece that I ordered it to go with. This is called Bittersweet Light and it is a Joblin. It's a 28 count and I hope it will show up for you. Isn't that pretty? You know what it looks like? Have you ever eaten a dreamsicle? A dreamsicle popsicle that's got that wonderful almost to orange tangerine flavor and then it's got the white in it as well. Well that's what this looks like. And the pattern that I was ordering it for is called Halloween Treats. It's a Stony Creek pattern. It was a freebie when I went to Indiana. It was on the on the free table where people had brought in their stash and they wanted to, you know, put it there for someone who might want it. And, um, you know, that's how I got my bewitching pattern at a different uh, retreat. So this was my real um, wonderful prize from Indiana was finding this pattern on the freebie table. And I think it's going to look just beautiful on that bittersweet. So that's what that is for. So now I have fabric for that piece so I can begin the kitting process. I have to look at it now for what kind of specialty threads or if it has any treasures or beads and then I'll look at that and I'll start putting that on my wish list and I'll start working on it. But that one at least has fabric. That's my biggest piece for me is getting the fabric. Okay, so the next one that um, I wanted to show you is a piece that's called Summer Nights, which is funny. It's called Summer Nights, but I'm going to do a winter piece on it. But I just felt like it was so, so pretty. This is like blue, almost an icy blue, and it's just got beautiful um, modeling in it, just pale white. So I think it would look like a snow drift, you know, with the light reflecting on it. So I got this one because I'm going to do these two on it. Giggles in the snow. There's a boy and a girl. They're on two separate uh, charts, but they're in one uh, pattern. And so I'm going to do that on this summer nights. And I just think that will be really, really pretty in there. There's a lot of um, gray in here uh, or blue gray where they've got snow written. It's kind of hard to see but I hope you can see it. And um, I'm, I felt like that it would show up on this light of color and especially if I, I'll do a, um, a floss check on it to make sure that it's the right shade or whatever. I may have to change out a few colors to make it work perfectly but that is what that fabric was ordered for. So now I can get started on that. And then you may recall a while back when I was um, opening <laughs> a Christmas exchange uh, that was part of one of our um, Facebook groups, uh, did a winter gift exchange. It was um, before Cross Stitch and Discuss um, decided to um, stop their group. And 
the partner that I had um, was just so kind and, and had uh, sent me so many beautiful, beautiful things. And um, this was one of them. And this is a Christmas Blessing Angel from Passomi. Is that right? Passamo. Ricamo, or Rick I'm not sure how to pronounce that correctly. But anyway, this is the beautiful piece. And I wasn't sure, you know, with all those beautiful burgundy red colors, I wasn't sure that I wanted to change the background. I felt like the background looked really pretty with it. They recommended a Jobelin lamb's wool. And that's what I got. So this will be for this. So now I have fabric for three more uh, new starts that I can put into the mix after you guys give me the first ones that I'm going to start on this in the near future. I just wanted to um, share it with you, let you know what I had gotten in the mail. And uh, that's the first haul I think I've gotten in a very long time. Um, since I ordered my um, cross stitch stand. And I did, I was able to do that. I've done that since I started the Stitch From Stash because I confirmed uh, with Stephanie and others in the group who let me know that your stand is considered a tool or equipment and it doesn't come out of your Stitch From Stash budget. So I have been fortunate enough to be using that already. So it's been probably two, two months or so since I purchased anything uh, substantial other than a skein of floss. <laughs> so my Stitch From Stash has worked really well for me in the last six months. And so I have now been able to uh, save up enough credit in that to feel comfortable to go out and buy this new fabric for these pieces. So that has worked well for me. I'm working on my final... Um, Probably my final piece for rotation this month. I may do a little stitching at the end of the month on my secret stitch, which is my gift stitch that I'm working on. And um, I have shown it on Facebook, but I can't put it on my video uh, since the person that it's for watches my videos. So this um, piece that I'm working on um, right now is the uh, children's garden. And I'll be working on it through the end of uh, at least this week, probably. So it'll be part of the ABC stat sale, and I'll use it for that, and I'll be posting there when I have it done. But uh, So I may uh, come back and record one wrap-up video um, so that I can let you know it's the end of the month and what I've accomplished. And, uh, but in the meantime, I hope that you have a fabulous time stitching and that you will, um, if you aren't doing videos, that you'll consider doing them and that if you are, that you'll continue doing them because I watch them. I watch them all day when I'm stitching, anytime I'm stitching. In fact, I have been known to take my iPad around with me when I'm cooking dinner and have it playing and watch it, you know, as I'm in the kitchen even. Um, because I can put you right there with me and look over and see what you're showing me, you know, and it works out just fine. My husband gets tickled when he sees me walking down the hall with my iPad and it's still, you're talking to me as I go. <laughs> he thinks that's very fun. Anyway, I do hope you have a great week and I will talk to you soon. This is Dina, and I'm coming to you from a very unusual place for a floss tube video. I'm in the laundry room. <laughs> what I want to show you today is um, something very different. This is alpaca wool, and it's compacted into a nice little tight ball. And they come in a set of four. I found these today at a homemade fair. This was a fair held in a town very close to where I live. And my son had heard about this fair at work 
while he was working night shift last night and he texted my husband and I and said how would you guys like to go to a um, homegrown fair where everything there is homemade or homegrown it's going to be you know from that morning till about five in the evening and there are going to be food trucks there that have unique types of food that you can try and we'll just go walk around and see what they have and maybe try some different foods at the food court <clears throat> at the food trucks so that's what we did and to my surprise in addition to things like wonderful soaps uh, made from goat's milk and um, you know beautiful scents and essential oils and things of that nature they also had homemade jewelry and homemade preserves and cookies and we got to taste things um, the chocolate chip butterscotch cookie was really good <laughs> and so were the cheese cookies but the thing that impressed me the most was the booth where they had the alpaca um, fibers and they had them in these um, in various ways and this was one of them and they also had fibers there for um, you just you know to knit with so I'll insert a picture here of how these were packaged And then I'll um, also insert a picture of the um, fibers that were available for knitters. So what sold me on trying these, and I haven't tried them yet, I'm going to try them today, were the advantages that were um, shared for these alpaca, alpaca fiber balls for your dryer what they're supposed to do is you put these four in your dryer and they absorb the moisture quicker and so they cut your drying time by about 25 percent so it cuts down on some of your um, use of electricity and saves you some time and they replace two things in your laundry room they replace your fabric softener okay, and they replace your dryer sheets you don't use either of those and the advantage to that from what the um, vendor was telling me today is that your dryer sheets have chemicals in them that can eventually get into the fibers of your clothes and coat your dryer and they can make you start to itch and um, I, I have a feeling that's probably true because my husband uh, has sensitive skin and every now and then he'll say, Ooh, I need you to wash these sheets sooner than you are. Um, they're, I'm itching all over and the sheets will only have been on the bed a day or two. Um, so he has very sensitive skin to that and I think it may be that it's the dryer sheets. I don't know, but I always get the, you know, free and gentle, no scent kind of stuff. The other thing... Um, that it saves you, uh, of course, is the fact that you don't have to continue buying uh, these uh, products, and so it saves you money. Um, these little alpaca dryer balls, um, they are um, going to also bounce around in the dryer, and so when they do that, they fluff your clothes. So it helps keep them from wrinkling while they're drying. And the other thing that I was assured today is that it will not affect the absorbency of your towels where actually um, commercial softeners like fabric softeners uh, can affect the absorbency of your towels. So I got these. Um, these are uh, Georgia Grown and they're from Yellow Rock Farm and I wanted to show you their, their little um, logo here. This was on the little package that came. Uh, they grow their own alpaca here in Georgia on their farm and they make these and the fibers themselves and they dye them themselves. And um, so these four are going in my dryer. And that's why you're here in my laundry room. <laughs> and I will give you guys an update later on, um, maybe next video, on how well I like them and how they 
how they do. Um, so, uh, an interesting new tidbit <laughs> from the Georgia Grown Fair, you know, the everything homegrown. So we had a great time, and as far as food, we went to uh, two different food trucks. There were three there, and so we split up and went to two different food trucks um, because the third one was ice cream. We didn't get ice cream there. We got lunch. So my um, my son went to a food truck that was the Southern and South American uh, Fusion, and he got a empanada that was filled with southern barbecue and macaroni and cheese. It was delicious. He let me taste it. He got a second empanada that was pepperoni pizza. Tasted like a hot pocket. <laughs> but the um, the barbecue and, and mac and cheese were, were by far my favorite of the two. And then my husband and I went over to the Indian um, food truck and we got a um, seasoned uh, grilled chicken on the um, bread, naan that they make, naan bread. And we also got um, samosa, I think is how you say it. And it's it's almost like a little egg roll, but it's, it had um, shredded potatoes and little English peas cooked in a spice. And then they were wrapped in this little wrapper and, um, and deep fried. Uh, and then they put a sweet sauce uh, over it. It was very spicy on the inside and very sweet on the outside. And it was quite good. So enjoyed the samosa. Enjoyed the um, the grilled chicken with, with the green. It had uh, a little bit of lettuce and cabbage in it. Uh, enjoyed that. Uh, on the non, and then we had the um, other food. So we were sharing and, you know, giving each other bites um, and just sort of did it like tapas, you know, and just had a great time today. So I hope if you have anything in your area that uh, is unique like that and you can share it with us, that you will. And I hope you've enjoyed uh, this new information. Maybe you already have some of these alpaca fibers, but I didn't, so I'm going to try them, and I'll let you know what I think. In the meantime, I hope you guys have a great weekend. It's uh, right before Memorial Day weekend. This is the Saturday of the Memorial Day weekend, and um, I hope you guys have a great weekend and that you get lots of stitching done. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hi everyone, today is May 29th. I am here to give you the last update on my whip for this month and to uh, also to close the loop on some feedback I promised you. Recently uh, in the video, probably the last um, segment, uh, showed some alpaca wool um, that were rolled into little balls and they were to be used in your dryer in lieu of fabric softener or uh, your static sheets, your dryer sheets. And I promised to let you know how we liked them. And we liked them a lot. Um, my The t-shirts and socks didn't stick together. There was no static in that. Um, and the shirts were soft as they could be. We've liked it. We're still using them. Uh, They're supposed to last for about a year, which should save me a little bit. Uh, of expense there for those dryer sheets and the um, fabric softener. So I'll let you know. But I will tell you one thing we discovered and that is that when you use them they are very dense. Uh, they feel hard, you know, like really packed in there. So when they bounce around in the dryer, <laughs> it kind of sounds like you got a pair of tennis shoes in there. Um, <laughs> Uh, just be prepared for that. You may need to close the door, uh, you know, to the room, to the hallway, whatever, wherever yours happens to be, uh, or just be aware it's going to be a little bit noisier than what you were used to. But they work. They work fine. Okay, so uh, today happens to be Memorial Day, so I just wanted to acknowledge that. And and I read something on Facebook that was just so touching recently that Memorial Day is a day of remembrance and not necessarily a happy um, holiday, 
but I, I think it's a very meaningful one. And, you know, my father served in the military. Um, my father-in-law served in the military. Um, I, and my husband has worked 31 years uh, at the Air Force uh, base here uh, where we live. So uh, it means a lot to me that it's a Memorial Day. So I hope you had a chance to spend time with family or to at least acknowledge their contributions that the um, men and women in our armed forces, uh, active and reserve and retired, have all served our country and us. And I just want to thank you all for your service. Um, so, on to my whip update to end out this uh, video, and I've been working on Children's Garden. I started this a while back for the ABC sale last year, and I've continued working on it every month um, during that sale, and I've just extended it to be two to three days around that date for the rotation on this piece. Um, I'll insert a picture here if I have it of where I was when I got started. But on here I will show you. My small goal for this month, for this rotation, was to pick up here where the feet are and do the grass here and start working my way up this arch. So let me show you how far I got. This is my children's garden. So I did get the grass completed and I did get the entire um, background done up to almost to the shoulder of the little boy. I did finish out a thread as I carried it on up above where I was stitching so I wouldn't have to park it. And my next month I will do a couple of things. Number one, I forgot to do the back stitching on the little boy's rake when I did it. It has teeth that hang down. And I forgot to do that. And that is the final piece of backstitching on this whole thing. There's no more. So the back. So I'll show you now uh, where I've gotten to on this whip. Here is my children's garden. And if you'll notice, I was able to complete the grass over to the border and up that side to about the shoulder on the little boy. And that is um, where I ran a thread out there just to, to finish using it rather than park it um, up above where you see most of the coverage. I did discover when I was getting ready to uh, remove this from my Q-snap today that there should be some teeth in the little boy's rake. And that is some back stitching that I missed uh, last time. And it will be the last bit of back stitching that I have to do on this piece because the only thing backstitched are the children's faces and hands and then the teeth on each rake. So if you don't like backstitching, this is a good piece to do. <laughs> There's hardly any backstitching on here. This is a butternut road pattern and I am really enjoying it. And so I hope that if you're interested in doing a sampler uh, like this, that you might pick it up and try it. Uh, I've enjoyed working on it each month for the ABC style since it does have the alphabet, you know, in the middle. And I love these rich colors. I think they're just beautiful um, on that pretty summer sky fabric there. So I hope that uh, I can get a goal next month to uh, do another section of the uh, arch, maybe up to the top. would be wonderful if I could get that far. Um, anyway, I don't know that I'll be doing uh, another rotation on anything the rest of this month. I have a couple of things that I need to work on. My family has decided to declutter our house, and so we have been cleaning out closets and the attic and drawers and storage, you know, everywhere, and, um, we're trying to uh, to kind of straighten and declutter everything that you do sort of once a year um, if you need to. And so we're in the throes of that right now. And, and my husband is also doing some, some little maintenance jobs, changing light bulbs and touching up paint where we may have had a picture here or bumped the wall there. Um, just some good maintenance for the spring, you know, getting ready for summer. And, and um, so... We do have a few obligations. I do have a couple of, of taskings that I'm going to have to do myself. But I hope to get started stitching on my next uh, whip. 
uh, you know, by the 1st of June. So I should be able to start vlogging for my uh, my June um, at that plans at that time. I don't, I haven't made them yet. I haven't looked at what uh, sales are out there for June, which ones I want to participate in. Uh, I know I'm, I'll be wrapping up Stitch from Stash in June, and I'm doing very well there. Uh, that has been a fun thing to do, and um, it's like a lot of you have said, makes you stop and think about what you're purchasing, and you're not just, oh, I like that I'm buying it for my stash. I, I tend to only buy what I need for the pieces I'm going to be working on or a pattern that I have, you know, if I'm buying fabric or stuff for it. But uh, I don't have any haul to show you uh, on this segment because I haven't bought anything new since I uh, last showed you my fabric. And uh, I think it's just been a wonderful month. I thoroughly enjoyed Stitch Mania. It did throw me off my um, normal rotation, which was kind of fun, you know, to do something a little different. Um, but what it also did for me, it, it it was so intense to know I want to start this on today. I want to finish this today. I want to work on this whip on this day and just for the one day. Um, it was a little manic, so it, it, it earned its name, you know, for me. Uh, but I enjoyed it, and I am looking forward, though, to getting down with my calendar probably tomorrow and just looking online at all the uh, Facebook groups and see what sales they've got going in the month and maybe plan my uh, rotation around those sales. So maybe in the first episode, first half of the month, I'll come in and tell you what my plans are. And that way you'll understand a little more what I'm working on for the month of June. I hope in the meantime that you guys are uh, in good health. I hope that you are getting lots of stitching time. And I hope that you've had some really um, memorable family time for this weekend. And um, until we talk again, uh, happy stitching. Bye.